a farewell feast. Sasha and Valya are gone, killed in the explosion on their wedding day. No one has any idea who would dump a grenade at their place. I still can't collect myself. I can't imagine how their parents are coping with the grief. Feels as if Pachorsk has come home to some evil power that keeps bringing misery upon us all. Well, at this rate, maybe it was Uncle Igor, considering the list said two grenades. But I just don't understand. Was this something that was related to some conflict taking place even before the radius was a thing? Or is it something else entirely? The more we learn about this, the more complex the situation becomes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Into the Radius. And today, our goal is going to be to go see about this Pechors Castle place, to the north, I believe, of the Jerk Zone. And maneuvering through there is difficult, but we're a little bit better equipped than we were before, at the very least. Uh, but before then, I'm going to be responding to some of your advice. First of all, some of you suggested that I should actually start carrying an ammo crate with me. Now, obviously I had considered that, but I figured it would take up too much room in the backpack and basically make it hard to grab stuff in a pinch. However, with everything we went through yesterday, <laughs> I'm starting to rethink that, honestly. I mean, clearly, it would be better to have more ammo and be able to reload the mags than to carry a whole bunch of mags. And by carrying a whole bunch of mags, you kind of run into the same problem anyway. Also, you also talked about how, since I said that the AP ammo sort of feels like it isn't, how it wasn't really making a dent in the armored enemies, well, there is a solution to that, too. I could upgrade to a weapon with a higher caliber. Which, of course, I considered doing, but uh, I'm gonna have to have a look at what's in stock and make sure that it suits my needs as well. I mean, besides the pistols, this is the first gun I've had in the game that just feels so nice and intuitive to use. Oh, which uh, actually brings me to another thing. Uh, some of you told me about an option that I should enable. Give me a moment. You said virtual stock. I'm quite curious to know what that means. So if I pick this up... Uh... Yeah, what is a virtual... Oh! When I'm double-handing it... it seems like it's a little bit steady. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I'm not sure what it's doing exactly, but... Oh, I see. It's like actually causing it to collide with my body. Excellent! Oh, yet another, yet another setting that I don't know why it isn't on by default. Uh, I guess I can see why it would be sort of disorienting in some ways, but this is much, much better, so thank you. You also told me that I should repair my armor instead of buying more? I had considered doing that, but when I went to repair some magazines earlier, like some AKS uh, magazines that I'd found in the field, it cost, like, almost as much as a new magazine, so I assumed that it would be the same for this, but let's see how much it is. This is down to 7 out of 40. Let's just see how much it is. Uh... It's a lot, but, I mean, mathematically it does check out, so it is actually better to do it that way. Now, for that matter, how is our stuff holding up? Uh, helmet, how are you doing? You're still okay? Uh, and this, how much punishment did we take in the armor department? Uh, not bad at all, actually, and we did take a lot of fire. This stuff is actually, like, critical, because we were doing far better in the damage department than in any previous mission. You had also suggested that I load up my glocazine rounds, and yes, that's what I'll be calling them now, and there's not a single thing you can do about it, with this plus P ammo. Now, I'm not sure what that means exactly. I've never heard of that in real life. Uh, what does it say? Eh, it doesn't really say anything that would tell me. But it does have quite a big AP increase, even over, well, AP rounds. So we'll definitely want to load up on those. Now one other thing we have to look at is what can we actually use in terms of the 762 family of assault rifles. Well, we had the AKM, which we had one and we sold it, but I'm sure we can find more in the field. I, I didn't use it because its stats were like a little worse for what I was looking for, but maybe that could be something we look into. We could also try like a higher caliber. Uh, this looks like it's more in the sniper rifle category, more like what I was trying to get out of the SKS. Uh, maybe a little bit down from that. Ooh, we're starting to get pretty expensive. An M14, a DVL-10 Diversant. 
but that mag capacity is starting to make me think, yeah, once again, more in the more in the marksman rifle category. Uh, mm, the FN-17, maybe. 20 rounds, so a little less mag capacity, but, I mean, if it packs a punch... Well, I'll leave that for later. In the meantime, my plan for today is to head back into the jerk zone, do a little bit of scavenging, and make my way into Pachors Castle. Now, what does it actually take up? Uh, it's like the whole bottom of my inventory. But if I'm going on like a clearing mission, ooh, I could even, oh, there we go. Yeah, some of you were telling me that I should be utilizing this gas mask trick in more ways than I have been, and that is certainly very useful. Uh, it's a lot of weight. How much does it? Eh, actually, not that much, grand scheme. Okay, yeah, we're gonna start doing that, definitely. Oops. Hang on, there's actually quite an expensive job on the Pervame route. 61. Since you possess sufficient knowledge of the rifts, you've been assigned a new mission. Locate... It's just a regular... broken shard? Hang on, wait. How's, how's the tide? Three days? Why is this so expensive? Oh, and there's something in Balaki Village. Bring the wristwatch of the missing explorer. Have we done a data recovery mission before? Well, either way, I mean, if we go there, we can make our way up through that direction and kill two birds with one stone. Oh, wait, no, I see why it's being a sneaky. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we have to get two of these, and one of them is over here. I should have looked at the map first. Uh, I would be really annoyed by that, except we're kind of going there anyway. We can't really hit this all at once, but look. We can do that as part of our mission into Pachor's Castle, and we'll do it first. But since we are doing all of this, uh, yeah, we can actually accomplish two objectives while we're there. And then do everything else tomorrow. Rise and shine. And this is going to be a really long day. We want to move fast to try and accomplish as many of these objectives as quickly as possible. All the bad experiences I've had here are starting to pile up, but to be honest, the more these places repulse me and try to keep me away and kill me over and over again, the more it makes me think there must be something good here for the looting. Now, one of you helpfully told me that uh, the reason we can cross this river down here, meaning we don't have to go all the way to that bridge over there, is because it's actually tied to your stamina. So if you run out of stamina while you're in the water, you'll start to drown, uh, which makes sense. Of course, that means we won't be able to travel over large bodies of water, but making this crossing should be fine. I think we'll enter that complex of buildings from the bottom right corner there. And, oh wait, <laughs> hang on, I gotta make sure. Hello? What, what? were you attached to? I was wondering where you went. I only had one of you for sale before. Uh, okay, well that's not important right now. Um, I need to load up the safety Glock. And some of you had asked me, why don't you put a suppressor on the safety Glock? There's literally no reason not to put a suppressor on a gun in this game. You're right. Counterpoint, it's a safety Glock. You don't modify the safety Glock. Unless it's to kill more. Now let's make our way through, try and analyze where the deeper parts are so that we know where we can and can't walk. Yeah, right here through the grass, we can actually cross over. So that's going to be a very useful landmark. Yeah, both of our things are here or here adjacent, mainly in that center building. I don't see anything moving. So let's load up. And head on inside. Oh, look at this. The ceiling's all collapsing, leaving a metal cage for the roof. I don't know what it is that's always been so creepy about being able to see, like, the beams of a structure. It's almost like you're looking at, like, the skeleton of a building. Like you're crawling through the rib cage of some large leviathan on the bottom of the ocean! Uh, uh... Okay, Sniper, I don't know why I'm standing around trying to look for you. You clearly hit me from out of vision, which means I need to be not in your vision. I see a bunch of armored boys over there. 
but I don't see where the sniper would have come from. You're all phantoms. Actually, let's try out some of that pistol ammo on you. Uh, but first things first, the sniper. Ah, oh, well, there's actually a rift in here. Or close to it, I think. Uh, it's outside somewhere. No, you don't. No. I'm not seeing anyone today, please. Uh, sorry, it just feels like my head is not in it today. I'm just walking and talking and not thinking at all. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Huh. So close range still applies to this stuff. Um, uh, the only reason I don't want to fire the safety glock right now... Uh, what are you doing up there? Is because I, I don't want to... I don't want to attract too much attention as long as the rift is still active. Because nothing we kill right now really counts. Uh, it must be in this hangar over here. I'm not worrying too much about the lights. Like, the headlights and all. But I am very much worried about making noise. Oh, that's a soldier. Yep, let's get away from the explosive barrels. When I run by one of those things during a firefight, I feel like a video game enemy. But that's you down. And now, let's see how firefighting feels with this virtual stock. Quite a bit better, actually. See, before, you probably noticed there was a lot of, like, waviness when I was trying to aim down the sight. That seems to have been virtually eliminated now. But this place is now safe from respawns, and we can do what we need to do. Now, this is one job. What about the other? Uh, okay, so that's this. We're not even in the main structures yet. We need that one right there in the middle. Uh, see, some of you seem to have, like, a little bit of a haze around you. I don't know if you guys can see it. But sometimes, even the regular ghosts, I can't tell from a distance if they're an armored enemy. Uh, but it sounds like there's an anomaly cluster in there! And who are you? Uh, that light's gonna make me stick out while I'm trying to find them, but I also, in this darkness, I can't find them without the light. Yep, there you are. Luckily, your singing will give you away. You're actually gonna silhouette yourself against the fog in the background, so... There we go. One sniper down, and I have to remember to go back for those crates. Now, how do we go about getting into you? Judging by the spence, maybe they're all connected from the side? Uh... I'm not seeing a way in. Oh, wow. This is actually reminding me, uh, architecturally, a lot of that maintenance workshop that I explored once on the channel. Uh, I believe the video went up under the title Santa's Workshop. Yeah, they do connect in the middle there. And there's a nice juicy crate with my name on it. Unfortunately, this stalker is capable of incredible physical feats, but not climbing up and over a waist-high window. So we're gonna have to go around like a noob. Alright. Well, we're going in. Oh, they're greenhouses. Oh, oh. But these greenhouses are growing more than whatever food products were in here before. This place is swarming with that black grass. Even growing within the flower beds. Uh, now would be a really good time to get out a second flashlight, but I'm nervous about putting my gun away. This path seems somewhat safe. Aw, oh, this is so creepy. The way these dead plants just obscure your way through, hiding danger within. And not to mention the regular inhabitants, also never failing to startle me. Look. The way the ash falls through the broken glass and pools on what's still there. Uh, this game really knows how to create eye-catching visuals. Even while you're most likely to just be thinking about the task at hand. Alright, 
right, let's... Can we crawl under here? I don't know if we'll be able to. No, it's just not gonna let us. Dead end. What about the other way? Maybe we can get through here? Just barely. Wow, I, I would not have even thought we'd be able to fit through there. Another crate? Okay, this is what I was hoping for. Lots of lootables. Now, do energy drinks like that? Okay, they do actually restore your max stamina. I wasn't sure if... Ooh. I was gonna say, I wasn't sure if maybe all they do is uh, replenish what's lost. AK-74 will keep you in case we need a higher caliber option in, like, the very near future. Because we can't always rely on getting close. That can be as suicidal as it can be helpful. Ah, through there. There's the doors we're looking for. Oh, this is so cool. You know, of all the environments we've been in so far, this is the one that, oddly enough, feels the most relatable to places I've been. Uh, but we gotta be careful about running out of here in a pinch. We do not want to be running through this black grass. A note. Confirmed a shortage of sour cream, cheese, several types of berries. Someone steals right from the warehouse. The watchman didn't see anything. I think it's one of the workers. Such a disgrace after receiving state awards. We'll try to look out for the thief for our own now. Okay, a couple of grenades! Okay, that... That made... I know they're grenade launcher grenades. I know they're not regular frag grenades, but I picked it up, and it was in my hand, and I heard a clinking sound like something falling to the floor, and I just panicked. Ah, oh, this is gonna be a treat. Let's hope this is a treat as well. Ah, some magazines, which we can repair or just sell. A gun, which we can sell. What are you? Never heard of you. Now... Let's get a look in. Cannot go very far in at all without running into something. We can go this way. What we're looking for will most likely be closer to the middle. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. Uh, we can climb up top. And as long as we can safely do so, that could give us a good vantage point. So many goodies on this map. Wow. Uh, uh, that's so cool how an anomaly detector in the environment will also go off. This game is honestly, it might be one of the most, like, to a T interactive games I've ever played. All right, let's just uh, loot what's here. Ooh, documents. Oh, this is what we're after. Secret documents. Well, I'm still obviously going to hunt for what's in here. Uh, drawings, calculations made by previous explorers of the Radius. The UNPSC are eager to pay a fair price to get their hands on these. You know, it seems like you guys lose more documents in here than you actually draw up at home. But into the sack of goodies it goes. I think we'll have to go back down in order to actually find these artifacts. Uh, and complicating this even more is the terrain itself. But we're very close to something. There we go. What are you, star? All right, but there's still more to be done. Oh, this environment is so cool. I I've talked about it before, but I, I honestly do think that artifact hunting in this game is better than in Stalker. And I know that's like a crazy thing to say, because Stalker is like, you know, the OG, but it, it just, it makes me feel so cool, artifact hunting, with my instrument out in front of me, tossing detectors out. I just feel like I'm one of those guys, you know, going through, surveying the environment. It makes it feel like a process. It makes it feel like I'm learning sort of a skill as I go. Even though it's very simple, it makes you feel that way. 
And that's what single player gaming is all about, is making you feel cool. Another regen artifact, probably keep it. Oh, and there's more still, but also enemies about. All right, we're not going that way. Ah, oh, there's still another room. Quite a wide area in front of us. That's... Oh, I kind of figured you'd be here. Okay, uh... Whoop! There you go. Uh, if an angel comes now, I'm in some trouble. I cannot do the backing up strategy here. Uh, or... Perhaps you. Well, uh... I guess that's fine, actually, since glass doesn't break in this game. Yeah, you can watch. I mean, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's actually since far farther than I thought. Uh, must have been going right over the side. All right, can we make our way around it? I think this is our route. Gotta go out and all the way around. There we go. Ah, and it this is actually an objective as well. All right. Huh, so wait, I feel like we're actually accomplishing jobs that we didn't know we had now. Because I've hit three things that should be objectives, right? I'll have to have another look. But now all I care about is getting out of here. Yeah, yeah, I didn't forget about you. And it's showering me with more goodies. I feel so spoiled in this episode. Maybe the game feels bad about last time. Uh, I just can't take you all, it's so sad. Everything we touch doesn't get rolled back from the tide, so it is actually sort of useful to put things in places we can collect them later easily uh, and just actually make our own little stalker stashes. Each day the corpses disappear and reappear, yet no one alive is found. Maybe something to do with the massive spear in the sky. Uh, do you think, do you think maybe that might have something to do with the anomalous properties of this area? I can't get close to it. I need a new rifle. Mine is nearly destroyed. I hear it again. A whale. Looks like I'll be going home dirty. Looks like. Anything in these lockers? No. Uh, I can't easily grab the handles. But I think we're just about done here. I do also need to load up on this stuff. I'm going to take this 5.56 ammo to sell, but at this rate, I don't think I'm going to have another 5.56 weapon. <sighs> Anomalies here, too. And no easy way out. Uh, that back door, perhaps. Uh, this was fun, but now I feel like it's kind of slowing me down. I've got a lot to do today. Can we maybe just slip on out the side here? I don't see any other crates or anything. Okay, open back door. More of you? Yep, goodbye. Oh, we can't get through that door. Avoid engaging if possible. I mean, I imagine if I come through here, you're probably going to get stuck, right? But I think we're ready to move on now to our next goal, which is going to be to get out of here, grab those crates on the way back, and uh, make our way into Pachor's castle. I want to know what it is. All we have to do is touch the region. We don't have to do anything else. And then we unlock the map. Uh, even more secret documents. Oh, we're completing so many missions, like, preemptively, it seems. And more ammo that we can use. Oh, there you are. Oh, wow, you actually did a number really quickly. Um, and there's a one to use back here. Where'd you go? Die kindly, please. Are you going to try to sneak around? I didn't think you'd come down from on top of that hill. Can't see anything over these puffs of smoke. Oh, but I saw you poke your head up. 
Idiot. Actually, with that guy down, and me with the advantage of coming up right next to them and close by, eh, maybe I could actually take this place and help myself to their goodies. Uh, it's so hard to do without being able to see anything, but... There we go. Headshot's still useful as ever. And yeah, not only have we taken this bridge, we've essentially taken the road into that large factory, the one we tried to get into the first time. Uh, but that's not what we're up to right now. Uh, we're going to take some of that gun oil, of course. I had told myself I wanted to start scavenging more of these. Uh, more more uh, plus P ammo for the safety Glock. That's excellent. And we'll come down here, loot what we can from this treasure trove, and make our way up the road. Oh, there's even a tower right there we could have a look at. Time, 1544. We are doing well. Especially since we cleared this place out. Now, it's a lot safer. I had talked about, like, how useless it seemed to do those clearing missions, like, for, for the UNPSC itself. But now that I'm the one having to traverse around so much, I really understand the value that's created in terms of saving time when certain areas are safer. I think it would be really cool if you could actually, like, climb onto these things and climb into the backs of trucks, both to use as impromptu cover and to see what lootables are back there. I mean, climbing back into trucks was a thing in Stalker. Uh, but remember, all we have to do is touch that zone. Right after we touch whatever's up in this tower, uh, now, of course, we're going to want to have Safety Glock at the ready, ready to uh, take out whoever may be occupying it. One of you actually told me that it is possible to one-hand climb a ladder. And, listen, on a theoretical level, I can picture what that looks like, right? I believe you. However, I cannot comprehend myself ever doing it. Uh, especially with how this feels... <sighs> I'm trying to, so what I've done for VR is I've actually started placing a yoga mat in the center of the room so that I know roughly when I'm in the center of the room for the best tracking. Obviously, if one of the base stations can't see my hands, it's going to have a harder time. But it's having a pretty hard time even now, and I don't like it. Okay, nobody here. Uh, yep. Oh, is this actually... Oh, it is a safe house. That's nice. But what have we here? Ooh, another cassette tape. All right, we'll listen to that back at base. It is starting to get quite late, and... Well, if current trends prevail, it's going to be even darker closer to the radius. Oh, and what I just saw is that, yeah, it starts to tell us in terms of color when it's starting to slow us down. There is a limit to what we can carry up here. You guys just won't leave me alone. <laughs> God, that was satisfying. Look, there's even the air fresheners dangling in the window. All right, let's see this Pachorce castle. Perhaps we should have a weapon at the ready. I'm just... <laughs> Listen to my heavy breathing, those flags swaying in the breeze. Uh, looking up through my helmet and being able to feel the weight of all this bulky clothing. This was a weird moment where, like, I'm just there. Uh, some stompers. Greeted immediately. <gasps> this is the radius. We're here. Oh, I look up and it's directly above me! And here comes the welcoming committee. It's not smart to stay here, but I just have to look. I have to. What's in here? Uh, we're gonna make this a quick run, just a very quick run. Another cassette, yes. Any information we can salvage from here, worth its weight in gold. Get close. Got to be careful, though. Those angels are definitely going to be about. And maybe something even worse. Look. Buildings on the horizon. Uh, some kind of makeshift, like, school set up here, it looks like. 
Some ammo. Oh, this place almost looks like an atom bomb went off. Just the rickety old skeletons of destroyed houses. This actually looks like farmland, though. Or like it would have been at one time. Oh, look, there's a dock coming out to the water. A couple of ruined boats on the shore. I wonder if this isn't what's meant by into the radius. What if into means actually allowing us to be pulled straight in? Katya. Katya, what say you? I know you've got to have some kind of insight. Looking across the bridge to what looks like a church. Hang on, Katya. <laughs> Uh, we had noted an interest in photography. Well, how would you like to be the subject of the thumbnail? Uh, moments like this, you have to stop and just look. The rich and powerful made this their home for centuries. When we came here on a high school field trip, I thought I could still smell the open hearth. The wine, the suckling pig, the blood. With not much for lords to do, and there's no war or political intrigue to amuse them. So blood kept flowing in their halls. They tortured and killed anyone who displeased them. To make an example of them, or simply for entertainment. Then, the castle fell into disrepair. And, anyway, the times were changing. The rich and powerful built themselves new palaces. This place stood abandoned for centuries. Though passers-by would sometimes squat amidst the ruins. Bandits, vagabonds, children without parents. A band of partisans stayed here briefly during World War II. They all died here. In the 50s, the Soviet government finally noticed the castle and turned it into a museum. And now... Now this is all that's left. Can't smell the blood of past centuries anymore. Can't smell anything human. I wouldn't call myself religious, but maybe we're paying for the sins of the past. For all the sins of humankind. For better or for worse. So we're talking about a literal castle. Cannot wait to get over there. Uh, imagine the things we could find. Imagine, well, imagine just walking those halls. Uh, I'm sure it'll be dangerous, but once again, my curiosity is at its absolute height. What is that? Hmm. Strange camera. Holding it in my hands, I hear someone's forgotten thoughts. Say cheese. Sasha, would you quit that, please? If you don't stop making faces, one day it sticks to you forever. It's white like Katya. Oh, we can't take a picture with it like we can the others. Okay, this is obviously coming back with me. Oh, there's a note over there. Uh, log one of two. Who's even giving me these missions? Why? I can't remember or understand a thing, yet here I am, pressed to continue out here. I've died once, and yet the radius lured me back in, and as if by some sick joke, lit the position of my demise up like a beacon. Yet there I wasn't. Just my things, huh? So maybe if we were utilizing the continues, there is actually a canon reason for it, even if I dislike it as a mechanic. Uh, it does probably make an effort to explain it then. Uh, here's another one he is. Really wish I could take them all back, but I suppose this means that now I can. No kinds of ammo that I need though, but I'll take the trap camera. And we can continue further still. Who even needs the light at this point? The glow which peeks from the edges of the radius, yes, does us just fine. Stash 19. 
I told him that was a bad idea. Dying is a bad sign. Who'd have thought? It makes people go nuts. But he wouldn't listen and went to the bloody castle. The last thing I remember is seeing flashes from the explosions on the right from the bridge. He must be lying there dead. Hang on, wait. He must be lying there dead now. Well, what's left of him? Alright, let's get going. Make our way back across the bridge and get out of here. We learned so much more than I was expecting. So here's what's going to happen. I'm feeling ambitious in this episode. We have a priority job at Petros Castle, and that's what we're going to do. Later on, we're going to head over there right after I finish mopping up these missions on the Pervame route in Balaki Village. And we're going to do all of this in this episode. I'm going to pack this thing. Just out of curiosity, and I'm certainly not going to do it. What does this sell for? It doesn't. We can't sell it. Okay, well, that means we have ourselves a souvenir, which Katya might like to see at some point. Maybe it'll even be relevant to something we can find at uh, Pshor's Castle. Let's see if we can't just sell them. I know we can't sell, like, regular objective things, because we can't sell the heavy helix. Can we just toss these in for some change? Yep. Oh, we can. They're worth, like, 450 each. All right, well, I'll take it. Now, let's have a listen to some of these cassette tapes. Okay, I was going to try and sit on the bed and have it be all atmospheric and reflective, but it won't let me walk away that far. Uh, and what about the other one? UNPSC, Explorer 12, Log 10-7, Reflector Anomaly. The Reflector Anomaly appears to be a transparent pulsing dome, 7 to 9 meters in diameter. This dangerous anomaly projects any non-organic object back the way it came with supersonic speed while also hitting it by several hundred degrees. If you walk into a reflector, it will throw you back several meters and emit a sound. Reflectors aren't that bad as far as anomalies go. They give you fair warning before actually doing damage. All you have to do is step aside. If you get hit by the beams, though, you and your equipment may sustain considerable damage. I recommend proceeding with extreme caution near this anomaly, as it has taken the lives of several UMPSC researchers who have tried to analyze it. Interesting. I actually hadn't considered the idea that anomalies could be damaging equipment as well, besides armor. Now, there we are. That's our map. The way through the Jerk Zone is actually the only way to Pachor's Castle and look. It's like a gauntlet leading us around and to the center. Uh, moving to the center is kind of the name of the game in this, isn't it? But we've retrieved everything we need to retrieve from here, and in the morning, we go through and do all this. Oh, and it's actually not a priority job in Pachor's Castle, uh, which means it's actually in our best interest to do a little bit of killing while we're in the Balatki village area. So we're gonna take that, and what does it wants us? And what does it want us to do in Pachor's Castle? Find the black box. The UNPSC cares for our explorers and entrusts you with a post-rescue mission. Locate and deliver the black box left by your predecessor in the marked area. Uh, that's actually quite doable. I'm leaving a little bit early, just so that I can have a head start in case I have to extend this day a bit. But as we go through this starting area, I want to take a moment in this 10th episode to reflect on what we've been through so far. See, I have had such an experience with this where, I'll be honest, in the first episode, I didn't know about doing this as a series. Because it, it seemed kind of slow, like I was really struggling with the mechanics, sure, because it's a VR game. However, it just seemed like it wasn't that interesting. Everything looked kind of dead and sparse. I mean, of course, that's like, you know, the situation in the art style, but the enemies were really slow and limping. I just didn't know if it would be interesting enough to carry a series. 
then I started to get the hang of the controls a little bit more, started to get the hang of really engrossing myself in the mechanics, and I was really starting to dig it, but then I was starting to think, once we reached that factory in Balaki Village, like, this is really hard. Am I even going to be able to play through this? Then, <laughs> then the AKS-74U came along. We had our experiences at Pobeda Factory, and I started to think, dude, this is awesome, and I'm really excited to play. But as with previous moments, it just... I, I feel so nervous about what we're going to find in that castle. I mean, it's not like the other levels. It's so clear that it's not. And I just don't know what we're going to find within. And am I ready for it? And the answer is, just like everything else we've encountered, no, but I'm going to kill it anyway. Yeah, I'm really not concerned with making noise here. And uh, However, how did I just grab that off of my own arm? Oh, there's a lot here. I definitely don't think we'd find anything in this volume prior to the scale up. I think it definitely scales up enemies. See, the thing about the zone, and this is something that I'm not sure if I like about the game or not, is that uh, the darkness really makes it impossible to see you guys. Like, if one of you guys is on a roof or something with a gun, and you don't silhouette yourself, I'm gonna have a real hard time landing that shot. But that's one job completed. Now we just have to go complete the other one and move on to Balaki Village. Please get out of my way, sir. Yep. Now the next thing should be a cluster through these woods. Oh, it's this over here and we can grab the rift in there, uh, which I think will be a good idea so that we don't have stuff respawning on us while we're trying to do this. Hey, uh, I'm your neighbor from next door, and I, I don't want to be that guy. It's just, you know, you're making a lot of noise, and the baby's trying to sleep. I know you understand. Yep. <sighs> that is just so cool to hear, like, the clang of metal as a bullet strikes an object right next to somebody who's fleeing around the corner. Uh, I'm just getting into so many shootouts with the Popo lately. Now, one minor criticism with this game and its artifact hunting... It's real cool that we have these, like, persistent places where we can look for artifacts and have it, like, reset and, like, we can come back and look for more. However, it does seem like sometimes, at least in some of them, the locations are quite obvious, and they probably are the same every time. Like, there's probably going to be one right here. Yep. There we go. And then I imagine there's probably going to be one in that shack, and another in that shack. I probably don't even need the detector to figure that out. So let's see if that's also the case. Yep, yep, yep. And that would be fine, except we're meant to, like, consistently come out here and do it. Another one of you. And the objective one should probably be in the other. Who's walking about out there? Yeah, I think there's somebody walking around down below me. It's kind of cool how while you're doing all this, even with all the intense sounds and such surrounding you, you always, like, hear those essentially sharks circling below you. I mean, usually these things tend to be in places where you're highly visible, and you'll probably grow a tail trying to do it. But there is our second heavy helix, and we can get going now. Of course, we're not going to get going. We're going to be moving on to Balotki Village. Now, here's what I'm thinking. We get there, there's probably going to be a rift inside. We'll want to destroy that. I don't know if we want to do that first, or clear out whatever's hiding in the woods just off to the side. Either way, I definitely need a new magazine. And we are locked, loaded, and ready to go. Uh, so many times now I've come up to this thing, ready to clear it out. Uh, starts to feel almost like a Sisyphean task. I'm not sure if that's the way you would pronounce that. I'm not sure if I put the emphasis in the right spots, but that's not important. The important thing is we're going to shoot this place up and kill a whole bunch of bad people. 
whom I can already hear. Don't sneak up on me. You know I don't like it. Uh, but I can already see who's there. Don't see anybody on the roof at this time. But I can hear that rift. Oh, that really scared me. The sounds from that are making me think that, uh, there's angels about! Ow. Wow, you guys can hit from pretty far! Alright, so what we learned is that they very much can show up outside of the areas close to the radius. They told us in the beginning that more dangerous entities appear the closer you get, but... But maybe it's not even about that. You guys jump real far. Maybe it's not even about that. Maybe it's just about earning their wrath. Like, they have no reason to appear further away. And now that I have gone to them, they want to... Well, they want to mess with me. Are you still... Oh, you're playing the long game, stalking from out there. I'm thinking I'm probably going to want to be in cover. Uh, and is that Seeker that I just saw over there, is he the one that snuck up on me before? Or is he still going to be coming from out of the swamp behind me? Alright, let's... Uh, I really wish this game had a jump button. Let's go... In the meantime, let's try not to get to the attention of whatever's over there. I can actually see you teleporting around. Killing you early might be the smarter thing. So where are you at? I've never actually figured out if they can hear my sprinting. I imagine they probably can. I can still hear them teleporting. Is it... Upstairs, maybe? I think it's getting- yep, it's getting closer, it's getting closer, okay. Okay, okay. Nice! Okay, so you are not invulnerable to headshots. That's what we learned. Die! Die! What are you- Ah, oh, man. Oh, wow. A whole bunch of is. Okay. Get open up. Thank you. Here it comes you guys. Oh, come on. Whoa! Whole bunch of stuffs. Oh, we are burning through our ammo so quickly. Oh, no. Well, that was a that was an experience and a half. There's just uh, there's no ammo left. I have one magazine. Okay, let's start relying on our safety Glock for a little while. It does also just do more damage, so maybe yeah, maybe it's worth it. To use this on tougher enemies? See, it's actually worth it to have what's out there come engage me in here. It's just a question of whether they'll all come in here and have it count. I know there's still another angel out there. They're always in pairs. And another problem, this is really going to be highlighted in this moment right here. Another problem I have is that sometimes, like, I'll see a situation, just think, oh, I'm having tracking problems, or, oh, that's too much, I'm dead, and not even try, and then, like, too late, I'll be like, wait, I haven't died yet? Okay, let me try and recover this. And I end up losing more than I really had to. Oh, there's a ton still going on in here. Yep, 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 yep! Who else is here? I know you're coming. Where are you? You're close. Out here. Let's bring it out into the light. Yep, there you are. Okay, so what we've learned is that we really need to go for headshots because it makes a huge difference on you guys. See, I've just been trying to go for like rounds on target on you. 
but it, it seems like headshots really do make a big difference. I think I had gotten it in my head so early on that like, no, headshots don't make a difference with those phantoms, that even though I intuitively knew that they're better on everybody else, I just wouldn't go for it. So maybe I'm not gonna do full auto anymore. Maybe, maybe I'll just do single. Now let's just use our regen artifact for our free heal since we have time. And actually, if we have a look, yeah, according to this, we have killed everything that was out here. That actually would have been a better strategy right from the start, huh? Okay, but we don't need you anymore. How much, how much does that take? A full health bar is actually, <laughs> we get a lot of healing out of these things. I should have been keeping them from the start. Oh, hey, look, it's the shotgun we left behind before. Oh, it's been several tides at this point. And a chest full of goodies containing all the ammo we can eat. Tell you what, I mean, if it's here, might as well use it, right? Come on. Yep. Now, remember, we're on the lookout for that scientist's equipment. And I'm thinking, since we haven't seen it sweeping through here, it's probably going to be down in the horror basement. So let's go ahead and just chuck that right on down. And, ooh, I noticed like a pickup in footsteps when that happened. Does that mean that maybe, like, ow, does that mean that perhaps they actually like hear me throwing stuff around? Uh, let's actually make sure we're all loaded up. Hello? And boop! And who else is gonna come running? Nobody down that way! <laughs> well, that was fun. All right, uh, safety Glock, you're up. Uh, let's try some of that P plus ammo. Bang, excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Had a little room to swing there. And still more of you, but you won't be respawning thanks to destroying the rift. What are you complaining about, Artifact Detector? What is there, like an artifact or something? Jeez, you're always whining. Uh, not here. Probably on that stool, right? Yep. Yep, there we are. There's still enemies down here, and I imagine they're in that horrifying part of the basement that we saw before. Just another one of these. And hey, I'll use the free ammo, especially since that free ammo is slugs. There we go. Ooh, you're a big one, Stellation. I think we've only found like a couple of you the entire game. But there's no more artifacts down here, which means we're just looking for some very human objects. Anybody here? I wasn't actually able to explore these depths last time. And it doesn't look like there's really much to find now. Okay. Yeah, I don't get it. It says we're looking for the wristwatch of the missing explorer. So we're looking for a small... Wait. <laughs> okay! All right, well, that's... There's movie levels of bumbling into things, and then there's this. Uh, what does it say? It's really a great thing. It combines the functions of a clock, compass, and portable organizer. Though many suspect the company uses these bracelets to spy on the explorers. They wouldn't do that. Anyway, let's get out of here. We've still got stuff to do today. None your beeswax. Yet another cassette. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to be heading out through the Balotki route. Uh, and then we'll head over to Pachors Castle because the thing we need to grab is right at the entrance. Once again, I've got all kinds of stuff for you. So that will be Radius Treasures 1. You want two heavy helixes. You and... come on, you. Yep. Complete. Thank you. And you want Balotki Village cleared. There you go. And... You, sir, a wristwatch? Oh, Santa's got something for you, too. Complete. Uh, what else? What else? 
you. You want the two rifts. Yep. And that's some efficient mission completing. Look at all that money, and we're not even done. We've got all kinds of sweet, sweet artifacts for you. And we now get to spend all that money on more ammo for the AK. Wow, still no top priority job. And only $900 for a cleanup operation in the jerk zone. Meanwhile, I can get $1,200 for a data recovery on the Pervame route. That's absolutely ridiculous. Well, I, I will take it, I suppose. Uh, but I th I'm thinking at this rate, that's going to be the next part. In the meantime, we've got a date with the castle. Now, although it is quite late, in contrast to the last time we were here, things should be pretty safe, and that will change as soon as the tide rolls us back, which we've still got some time on. So let's make this quick. And maybe on the way back, well, if it doesn't get much darker than this, which it wasn't when we came back the last time, maybe we could also have a look in that factory over there? Oh, there's some guys. Yep, I should have known that a job would be guarded. Come on. There we go. Okay, so... Taking the time to just, like... Okay, full auto is still better, but you gotta put that full auto into their heads now. Okay, down on the fire selector would mean semi-auto then. Okay, so it's up is safe, mid is uh, auto, bottom semi-auto. Good to know. But I definitely saw some armored boys, so let's uh, let's keep in mind lessons learned before. Head to the house, because we're always better off when we've got some kind of cover. Not that's really a lesson, but you know, just it works out better than not. Yep. Oh, come on, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna let me get over this lift to the house. Thank you. Now, what's the best way to go about doing this? Do we want to pop out that way and take shots from here, or go around? and try and move up to the garage. I'm thinking try to move up to the garage. Oh, I wonder if they actually remember your last known position and use that to get quicker sights on you? Like if you pop out of the same cover twice? Stop that. I actually don't see them at all now. So let's move on. Actually, I might have caught a glimpse of one inside right there. Let's just, uh... Move on up and see what we can see. Let's do a 360 check around it. I hope there's nothing over this hill here. Uh, now, it may make more sense to go full auto for closer range armored enemies. Like, if we're going into a room, we're going to want rounds on target because it's going to hit us pretty quick. And a lot of the fighting that we've had right now has been, like, very close-range engagements where semi-auto, it's just not fast enough. Ow. Of course, neither is this a lot of the time. I should have just kept it down. All right, so what about you? What if we just hold down the trigger? Like that. Yeah, you still get a shot on me at that close range, but uh, with armor, it's not as bad. Is that what we're here looking for? Another case? Black box. It's not black. Flight data recorder and a cockpit voice recorder of the crashed helicopter. Well, you must have taken it with you from the crash site, because I don't see any helicopter around here. But... You found your partner, too, and I think we're good for now. Let's go. All right, look, it's late, and we've got the package in hand, but call me greedy, I want to check out this factory. With the bridge cleared, it's going to be a couple days before we have another chance like this, and, well, I'm curious. I want something to show for this outing. So I'm going to stash this right here at the bottom, uh, right on the trunk of this car so that it's in a identifiable position. And let's make our way up the hill and see what the fuss is about. But I don't see anything yet! There you are! Ah, you're actually a little tougher to see when you're not armored. Now, let's uh, make sure we are on semi for you, then. Who 
Who else? Not actually a whole lot here. See, the thing is... When you try to scavenge during a mission, you're gonna run into a lot more contact. I don't like coming into a room and seeing those ghosts there, knowing that I just heard somebody in this direction. Even the sound of putting that on my back echoed throughout the space. Oops. Oh, there is somebody here! Whoa! Okay, take cover behind your friend. There we go. Got them all crouched and moving. And we can grab another one of these things. Well worth the trip already. Who's out here? Ooh, hoo -hoo. That was reflexive. And we've got shooters. Okie doke. Oh, I'm getting better at this. More of you. You are a shambler, so I'm not too worried about you right now. Somebody's running about. One in there. Do I want to use the safety glock? Do I want to risk angels? Answer, not really. Oh, there's just always more. Ammo? Not a lot. And I am carrying a full crate, almost, on my back, so that's no problem. Uh, wait, let's uh, switch it to auto. Just a waste of ammo at that point. I feel like maybe it's only really good if they're, like, cornered in a room, and you can, like, immediately go in and just light them up. Ow. <laughs> I love what, like, a nuisance those things are. It's almost like chasing a mouse when you finally kill one. But I can hear them moving all about. Okay, just, uh, just a regular smoky phantom. I can't get over this. Ah, uh, there are so many places where it feels like jumping would be useful. But I think the factory floor... Or I keep calling it a factory. I'm pretty sure it's a rail yard. We're getting closer and closer to danger. Ooh, a recorder. <laughs> okay, I'm doing magic tricks now. I don't know why it's not letting me... I don't know why it's not letting me put that away. Is that a bug? See, what I'm starting to see, actually, and what I would started to observe in the last episode... It never really gets dark when you get this close to the radius. And so, it's essentially a 24-hour explore zone, as long as you've got the stuff to back it up. So, let's make our way inside. Even if it would be smarter to, like, go through that building and come out, like, halfway... I still want to get my head in there and just see what's going on. I definitely hear multiple sets of footsteps. Yep, there's at least one sniper. So I'm going to kill my light so that it's harder for them to see me, even though they probably still easily can. Nope, nope wrong thing. Yeah, we are definitely, definitely going to need, like, a better ammo type. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. No longer the time for stealth. Let's do this normally. Come on. You dropped surprisingly quickly. Yep, 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 at least two more enemies, though. Can't even tell if I'm hitting you or not. I can hear you reloading back there and taking more shots. I can never tell what actually obscures your line of sight and what doesn't. 
Ah, oh, you're up there! Alright, we're definitely gonna have to clear you out before we do anything else. <sighs> we're having all kinds of problems uh, with regards to... With regards to hitboxes, I mean, so are you, which is helping me, but... <sighs> there was just that one particular spot that I had to hit. Tracking, I really do not appreciate the stuff you're doing to me today. <sighs> I think there might still be more than one. But let's take this opportunity to move up. I don't see you. Oh, there you are. Ah, got you! Ah. How's our health? Not good. Uh, where's, where's me thing? Get that going. Healing up. behind the train. Either way, it may be advantageous to run up to the train. Maybe try to get the high ground, but I just don't know how things are working with these railings right now. Oop. Well, this could help or hinder me. Uh, certainly a cool view, though, and potential thumbnail? Who knows? Uh, maybe not. We've seen a lot of crazy sights in this episode. Oh, and there's a rift here. All right, let's go. I can hear them moving around. Where's that rift? I think it's over there somewhere. We gotta get to that quick, because there's a whole lot of guys who are gonna be respawning on us if we don't. Here we are. Uh, and die. <laughs> well, that saves us some trouble in the near future. Now, let's see what we've got here. Another of you. And good for money, if nothing else, as always. And I will help myself to these magazines. We're going to need them if we're going to start using you. Ooh, more health, more ammo, and who? one of you... Uh, checking shelves, always useful. Now, let's uh, deal with the rest of whatever's out there. If we... Oh, I can see something down there, another chest. But I don't see any shimmers from enemies. Uh, scary, scary times. Listen to the turning on the light echo throughout the building. How did a flashlight come to be up there? Uh, some of the oops, some of the loot hiding locations are actually really really creative, and it gives this game like such a such a scavenger's paradise feel. I love it. All right, I know you're down there. I know you're over there. You try and get an angle on me, please, because I'm trying to get an angle on you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yep. Can I flank around? I mean, you can probably hear me doing this, but perhaps it's possible. Ooh, another chest here. Not you. I'm looking for your friend. Oh, there's more over there. Probably very low on ammo in this mag. Yes. Could potentially make use of this if we know where you are. Yep! I know where you are! Sure! <laughs> oh, wow! Well, sometimes things just work out. <laughs> I feel like a lot of my victories are more luck than anything else, but it's at least pretty funny. Oh, there's still more out there. All right, what's... First of all, what does a bad condition healing injector mean? And second, what does this do? Maybe I shouldn't be injecting myself with strange syringes. A G18. Well, look, the safety Glock is canonically a G17. But maybe we could have two? Oh, maybe we could even dual wield. Who's sneaking around? 
Definitely behind this wall. I'm actually pretty impressed with how I was able to track you there! I am getting lit up today. Yeah, I can't seem to remove this. Ah, oh, there we go. 7 out of 40. Wow, it's taken a lot of punishment, but it should still be working, shouldn't it? I don't know. In any case, I can hear more out there. This place is absolutely swarming, but it was high risk. Very, very high reward. And we're going to be moving now. Ooh. <laughs> I love it when something really eye-catching like this actually bears some kind of fruit. We're gonna have a couple of tapes still to listen to on the way out of here. Huh. There's a note right here on the bridge. Oh, come on, don't do this to me now. Oh, you're gonna make me... This doesn't feel good. <sighs> Dear Mom, I'm sorry for not arriving as promised. I can only be there in a week. There's a lot of work at the plant, as my shift worker went on maternity leave. The whole department relies on me now. I'm sending gifts for Vadim and you as, and some sweets for the neighbors. Be sure to keep the shawl to yourself. Kisses. I'll be back soon. Larissa. Let us sell our precious lootables. I'm at this point convinced that we can't take anything out of here. I mean, I've tried all kinds of different things. I don't think there's anything to remove from it. So we'll sell that as well. 1619. You go straight into here. Uh, sure, I guess that counts as in. And I'm really hoping at this point that that'll give us access to the next priority job. And for our next tape... UNPSC, Explorer 12, Log 8-13, Fragments. Fragments are humanoid in appearance, although it is unclear whether the material they are composed of is biological in origin. We have observed over time that the bodies of fragments have a texture reminiscent similar to rubber and of wool. And though they are not as warm as living human beings, their body temperature is higher than that of inanimate objects. This debunks a myth prevalent in the first few months after the event among the changed and even some UNPSC scientists that fragments are reanimated corpses. There is, however, a new and more dangerous myth circulating. A few explorers claim to have recognized missing colleagues among fragments and insist that, therefore, at least some fragments are former change. One explorer reported killing a fragment that had the features of his romantic partner who had disappeared sometime prior. He subsequently received extensive counseling for PTSD, which unfortunately seemed to have been insufficient, as he eventually cut off contact with the UMPSC and other explorers and is presumed defunct. Such are the unfortunate consequences of unfounded speculation about the nature of the zone phenomenon. Other field researchers I have interviewed are in agreement with the UMPSC that fragments are not, in fact, former changed. I advise explorers to set aside any doubts on this account and defend themselves as necessary when encountering these dangerous creatures. Okay, well, in trying to dispel doubts, you kind of imparted some that I didn't have previously. I mean, look, we've been hearing the same phrases recycled over and over, but... Hey, that's because it's a video game. If they could actually make out such features, hear such things... If this thing lures people closer to the zone, if it preserves those such as Katya... Well, anything's possible. I started this game out pretty certain and started to develop doubts as time's gone on, so... Maybe that's the point. Anyway, uh, not in here, but here is our next one.
it's getting clearer. Wow, I... Well, look, that sounded at first like just distorted noise, but as I listen closer, I feel like I could hear, like, at least one voice, maybe even a conversation. And at times, even, like, music. And a couple of mic taps, but I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. In any case, that is a very weird thing. Anyway, what jobs are available to us now? We have another top priority job. Pays extremely well, but it's in the jerk zone. Kids Playground. The committee appreciates your compliance with our orders. Your next task is to explore another epicenter of abnormal activity in the rail depot. Similar to the previous mission, the artifact is hidden and needs a specific ritual to be discovered. Look, if- how long until tide? Fifteen hours. Okay, no time to sleep. We've cleared it out. If we want to do this, we gotta do it now. Oh, I was all ready to end the episode, but hey, it's episode ten. We can make this a little special and long, can't we? Oh, we need to- it's another one of these search missions. Of course, something else that I'm now realizing as I head back. And we will have to be careful, since the kill mission is just, like, down there somewhere. Even though we've already cleared this place out in this tide, it's still entirely possible that it spawns more for the mission. I'm not 100% sure that that's how it works, but it sure feels like that's how it's worked in the past. I'm not hearing anything so far. We destroyed the rift that was inside. Oh, and I hadn't realized there was dialogue here. If the driver's cab is red, point your flashlight straight ahead. Okay, well, that sounds fairly straightforward. Let's have a look at the various trucks and other vehicles in this region. Another blue truck. Uh, ooh, this building's been barricaded. What's inside? You guys standing guard? Those your expended shell casings? From keeping whatever's in here super duper safe? Uh, I'm not finding anything that might help with this. You guys are gonna have to take your secrets to the grave. Uh, does that count as red? Looks like orange to me, or yellow. Ooh, more dialogue right here. Uh, you kids leading me on a scavenger hunt? Driver's cab is green. Put your light in, you will win. Ah! Huh. Well, okay. And does it have to be with a flashlight? Does it not work with the headlamp? Or are some of these just straight up misinformation? Like, that one kind of sounded like maybe she was misremembering what she was supposed to do. God, I know what happens now, and it's still scaring me. Maybe it has to be done in a certain order. Oh, I hate that I can't walk over these things. Let me jump. So I just loaded a save to get out of there. But the advantage is that that gives me another chance to have a look at this. Now, that was a red flash. I didn't see the one before. Now we can grab this. But that's got to have something to do with it, right? Ooh, there's something going on here as well. Oh, you are an entirely anomalous train. Wait, what happens if we... Yep. Doesn't seem to be killing me. This thing is solid. 
Oh, I love being a zone scientist. This is pointing in this direction. No effect on the anomaly detector. Ah, there's something up there. Uh, can we perhaps climb this? Should we climb this is another question. Ooh. Uh, do we, do we stay for science or do we jump off for safety? Uh, as an immortal being, I vote stay for science. Wait, it's going that direction. Does that mean that it's going to take us straight back home? Uh, this is a useful new thing, and maybe this too. Who? A flat translucent ring. You'd tell it's made of glass if it wasn't so heavy. It looks broken, but its shards stay in place for reasons known only to the radius. Well, if, if our journal says that that's all there is to it, then I suppose I'm happy. Oh, let's turn off our light. This gives us a moment to actually, actually go on basically a cruise of the jerk zone. Oh, I haven't seen that before. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but in the distance, it looks like on a huge amount of unearthed ground, there's just a house sitting on top. Uh, maybe it's looking for a witch to land on. I don't know of any witches, but I know some angels it can hit. See, these two missions, the two that we've done here where we had to figure out what to do to uncover the artifact, these are something really special, I think, because not only do they make you engage with what this place once was, it also gives a sense of wonder to the zone. Something that makes you really appreciate it from a sort of childlike adventurous perspective, as opposed to all the danger and slog that we've been through. I mean, look at us, riding on a black, shimmering train through the desolate landscape. It's things like these that make up memorable gaming experiences. When you're under fire, you only think about accomplishing the objective. Sometimes I think it's important to have those moments where it's just about being in the moment and experiencing something cool. Uh, games like Red Dead 2 are full of stuff like that, and I think that, more than anything else, is what people remember about them. Well, <laughs> oh, imagine the looks on my boss's non-existent faces if I had actually rolled up with that thing. Uh, showing up here now is like waking up from a dream. Uh, they'll never believe me that it happened, but I have the artifact to prove it. Ah. Uh, and here is our note for the mission. Kids Playground. Another fatality reported at the train depot. The watchman was ran over by a train. They also caught some kids on the site deadly frightened. They confessed sneaking into the depot, though I don't think they could get that train moving, could they? The thing was broken, rotting there like the last 15 years or so. What power could do that? So there's another angle now in common between those two that I hadn't considered before. I mean, in their backstories, they almost have all the makings of, like, a haunting. And I don't know if they take place, like, after the Radius appeared here, when people were still trying to go about their lives, but... I don't know, it, it seems like something was going on here even before the obvious danger. Oh, very interesting. 
And, it, you know, both of those missions have such, like, a whimsical feeling to them. And then just some really dark, like, story attached to them that we don't find out until afterwards. In any case, they do both feel like the impressions of just strong events or memories. Actually, only the good parts of those things. It's only afterwards that we learn of what makes them so strong. Which is really something to think about. Anyway, here you go. Yep. And yep. Thank you for the easiest $7,000 I'll ever get. Anyway, I don't see any directions leading off to new places, which leads me to believe that we've revealed the entire map as we can explore it from the hub. Are there any new missions available for us? Uh, no. Seems like next time we're right back into the regular missions. I think the next priority job we receive is going to be going straight to the heart of Pechors Castle. Now, I don't know if I should explore it some on my own before we get a job, but... Uh, hey, there's nothing like storming the castle, especially when it's a literal castle. But that'll have to be next time. Until then, if you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.